This will be recorded. So we have two variables, A and B, and they're related by the equation A to the third power plus B to the third power is equal to 91. What is the rate of change of dA by dt when A is equal to 4 and dB by dt is equal to the third? Yes, the test is on Wednesday. So all the homework and everything has been pushed back to Wednesday. All right, so here we're finding the rate of change of dA by dt. That means we're taking the derivative with respect to time. So you're telling us this. So we're taking d by dt of this whole problem. a to the third plus b to the third is equal to 91. Now, when we say the derivative of a to the third, that will become 3a squared, just like we have done before many times. However, as we mentioned last class, because the variables there are the same, we need to, are different, we need to include a dA by dt. Similarly, this will be 3b squared dB by dt. And finally, we have to take the derivative of 91. And what's going to be the derivative of 91? Zero. Very good. Because the derivative of any constant is zero. It doesn't matter which variable you take it with respect to. So what are we trying to find? We're trying to find dA by dt. Oops. This is what we're trying to find. And they've given us a few things. So they gave us a is equal to 4. So we can substitute for a. They've given us db by dt, which is equal to 3. But we're still missing the b. You guys see that? We still need to find b in this problem. How can we find b from this problem? Well, look at the original equation right here. Could we substitute for A into that problem and find B? Okay, so we know A is equal to 4. So we have 4 to the third plus B to the third is equal to 91. And four to the third would be 64 plus B to the third is equal to 91. And if we subtract 64 from both sides, you give us B to the third is equal to a 17. 27, that's 27, does everyone agree with that? And of course to find B, we can take the cube root of that. So B ends up being three. So now we have everything we need to solve this problem. Because here we are missing the B, that's why we have to go through our process. Now we can substitute for everything. So not a bad problem overall. So this would be three times four squared 
times dA by dt, which is what we're trying to find, plus three times b, which is three squared, times db by dt, which is three, because they already gave us this also here, is equal to zero. <clears throat> So that becomes 48 dA by dt plus 927, 81. Did everyone get 81 for that? <clears throat> we can move over to 81. And finally, divide by 48, which I know can be simplified. What do we get for this when we simplify it? That's 27 over 16. I think that's as far as it's simplified. I'm trying to see how they wanted the answer. All right, yeah, they wanted that fractional answer. So what we have here is correct. So this is what you would input. So you do a few word problems. Here's one of them. Let's try this one. Any questions on the one we just did? Number seven, before we move on. So number one and number seven are a little easier because they gave us the formulas. Here, and you do have a few of these problems in a homework where you're not given the formula. So this one says a metal cube dissolve in acid such that an edge of the cube decreases by 0 0.40 millimeter per minute. How fast is the volume of the cube changing when the edge is 7.8 millimeters? Okay. So what are we trying to find? the volume, something with volume. It's how fast the volume is changing. So what is that exactly? So that is dV by dt. So they asked us to find the rate of change of volume with time. So that's what we're trying to find. So you guys are kind of familiar with a cube, right? So if we can sketch a cube here. So we know a cube, you know, is all the sides are equal. So let's assume that's the base and this is the height. It's 
sine that cube. But if all the sides are equal, we could label a side x, x, and x. And we know that's true because it's a cube. Now, how do we find the volume of a cube? Does anyone remember? No, well, we could do the length times the width times the height. So in this case, it's going to be x times x times x. So the volume of the cube becomes x to the third power. Now they're telling us that x is equal to 7.8 zero millimeters. So they're telling us that the edge is that. <clears throat> so how fast is the volume? So we need to find dv by dt, which means we're going to take the derivative with respect to time of the whole problem. So what's the derivative here? What's the derivative of v? Is it 3x squared by dx dt? All right, so I agree with that on the right side. So that would be 3x squared dx by dt. How about the left side? dv by dt. This once again, the variables are different, so we will have that dv by dt or dx by dt in there. And since we're solving for this, it's just a matter of substitution now. So it's going to be 3 times x, which is 7.80 squared times dx by dt. And this is our dx by dt. See, so the edge of the cube is decreasing at a rate. You can tell that this is a rate. It's millimeters per minute. So that's our dx by dt. which is 0 0.40. Actually, this should be negative because it's decreasing. What do we get for an answer for this? Negative 73.008. And this would be millimeters cube per minute. Because it's the rate of change of volume. So even though the edge is just changing at such a small amount, 0.4, the volume is changing significantly per minute.
All right, let's look at this one. This is number eight. It says, find the rate of change of total revenue, costs, and profits with respect to time. So once again, we're finding the rate of change. So there, that means we're taking a derivative with respect to time. And we're doing this for revenue, cost, and profit. So we're going to do d by dt of, first of all, the revenue, which is r of x is equal to 60x minus 0.5x squared. This becomes d by dt. The rate of change of revenue becomes 60 dx by dt, because the variables are different, minus 1x dx by dt. Any questions on that? It seems, you know, complex, but it really is not. So what are we going to do? plug in some values? Dx by dt, they gave us 15. So this is times 15 minus 1 times x, which is 25, which they also gave us times 15 again. So what do we get for the rate of change of the revenue with respect to times per day? Get an answer 525. Okay. So the revenue is increasing per day. All right, let's do the cost. Move this problem down. So our cost function is 5x plus 5. the derivative of that with respect to time. So that becomes d c of x over dt is equal to 5 dx by dt. This gives us 5 times dx by dt, which is 15, which is $75. So the cost is increasing at a rate of $75 per day. What else they ask us for? The profit with risk time. So we know profit is equal to revenue minus cost. We also know that d by the rate of change of profit is equal to the rate of change of revenue minus the rate of change of cost. So we already have this value, which we calculated above, is $525. And we just calculated this value, which is $75. So 
this becomes 525 minus 75, which is $450. So the profit is changing at a rate of $450 per day. All right, questions on this before we move on. One more problem I want to cover. All right, let's look at this one. This is number 11. Probably the most challenging problem in the assignment. So it says a ladder 15 feet long leans against a vertical wall. So this is a wall over here. This is our ladder. If the lower end is being moved away from the wall at a rate of six feet per second, how fast is the height of the top changing? Hmm. All right, so you guys understand what we're saying? So this ladder is basically it's like slipping on the ground. And it's and that's the x value. So our dx by dt is changing at six feet per second. So it's slipping. And if it's slipping, then the height is going to change. They're also telling us that, that this is nine feet here. We are required to find how fast the height is changing. So the height is y. So we're trying to find dy by dt. That's what we're trying to find. The height, you know, it's going down. And of course, they mentioned it's negative because the height is being reduced. Well, how do we set up an equation for this? Not as bad as it looks, kind of like going back to the previous, one of the previous problem up here, where number seven, where a cubed plus b cubed is equal to 91. This is a right triangle that a ladder makes of the wall. So we know that x squared plus y squared is equal to 15 squared. So this is just using Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. You guys familiar with that? OK. No, they gave us x is equal to 9. But we're trying to find dy by dt. So once again, we know we're going to take the derivative with respect to time. So what's the derivative of this function? What's the derivative of x squared? With respect to t, what would that be? Two x dx by dt, right, Merta? So once again, the variables are different. How about the y's? It's two y dy by dt. I agree. And about a 15 squared. Zero. It's a constant, right? Thanks, Don. Now, what are we trying to find again? dy by dt. 
So this is our unknown we're trying to find. They gave us dx by dt, they gave us x. So we're still missing one thing, we're missing y. So we need to find this y value. Once again, it's like that problem number two that we did earlier on, right? We can go back to the original equation. We know that x squared plus y squared is equal to 15 squared. And we can substitute for x, which is 9. And that will give us a value for y. So this is 81 plus y squared is equal to 225. So y squared would be equal to 4, 14. So y would be equal to 12. And we can substitute here. So this becomes two times nine times dx by dt, which is six, plus two times 12 times dy by dt is equal to zero. So that's 24 dy by dt. What's that? It's 108. We move the 108 over, it becomes 24 dy by dt is equal to negative 108. Divide both sides by 24. dy by dt is equal to you guys get when you simplify that. Nine over two. So it's nine over two, Let's say four point five, then what's that? Feet per second. And it's negative because we're going down. So this is what we're saying originally. Right, the y value over here is decreasing. So it's it's gonna get smaller. And they also tell us in the question that this will be a negative rate. All right, you guys have any questions on this? 